It was one of the most notorious murders in the history of the metro Atlanta area in Georgia. Fred Tokars was this celebrated lawyer, former prosecutor, who, for whatever reason, and, and, and you know, God only knows, right, hires a hitman to murder his wife in front of his children. Horrific case. Notorious trial. Fred Tokars was convicted, went to prison. Now he's dead. Ted Rollins has the rest. Fred Tokars appeared to be a pillar of society. He had been a prosecutor, then a defense attorney, and even a magistrate at one point. So he was a success story in Atlanta. Tokars and his wife, Sarah, had two little boys, Ricky and Mike. She loved being a mother and getting involved in her son's lives at school. In November of 1992, his young family suffered an unthinkable tragedy. A gunman ambushed them in their home, forced Sarah into her car, and after a short drive, killed her in what looked like a bungled robbery. The loss seemed to be felt by the entire city of Atlanta, but sorrow soon gave way to suspicion. As it turns out, Fred Tokar was getting into some criminal conduct uh, in the course of his business dealings with his partner, Eddie Lawrence. Sarah found out about his secret life, that is his criminal life, and also there were women on the side, and was looking into divorcing him. Fred Tokars became a suspect after police tracked down Sarah's killers. What can you tell us about the uh, murder of Sarah Tokars? Did Fred Tokars hire you to uh, kill his wife? Eddie Lawrence was a business associate of Tokars. He told police that Tokars wanted his wife killed. In exchange, he promised him a portion of his wife's insurance policy, valued at nearly $2 million. He was helping them set it up so that he would not be home, but it would happen at home. Lawrence, in turn, hired this man, Curtis Rower, to do the job. Rower waited for Sarah to come home after visiting her family in Florida for Thanksgiving. Well, he called me and told me that I was going to get you some money. I think someone who is alleged to have had his wife brutally murdered in front of their two children should be tried for murder. Mr. Tokars, you have anything to say? No comment. Tokars and his co-conspirators were tried separately. No, I, didn't, I wasn't looking at it like that. When Curtis Rower claimed at his trial that the shooting was an accident, prosecutors turned to the only witness they had to prove that it wasn't. Ricky Tokars, just six years old at the time, was in the front passenger seat when his mother was shot to death. He described the exchange between his mom and who he called the bad man. Uh, don't try to f with me. And what did your mom say? I'm not trying to f with you. Ricky went on to say that the bad man shot his mother with a shotgun and ran away, leaving him and his brother alone with her body. I sort of see if my mom was like, so uh, wake her, she was dead, and then uh, I woke my brother up, and you woke your brother up? Yeah, and then, uh, I told him we had to go get help, and then we went to go get help. Ricky could not identify Curtis Rower as the gunman, and on cross, when the defense suggested he may not have remembered the incident clearly, the eight-year-old was unshakable. Yeah, but you know, I like, tell you like. First time you hit a home run, mm -hmm. like that, uh, you like always remember that, don't you? Yeah, it sticks out in your memory, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's like what it was with my mom. Ricky's tear-filled testimony ended with a reassuring hug from his mother's family. He was ultimately spared the ordeal of testifying at his father's trial, but his trauma was not lost on the jury. While the rest of the country was watching football games, my little nephew, Ricky, was standing in a pitch-dark observation room at the Cobb County Jail, trying to pick out his mother's murderer from a lineup. While Tokars didn't pull the trigger in his wife's murder, his involvement was apparent in other ways. One of the comments he, uh, Mr. Tokars made was is, uh, the f rackheads weren't supposed to kill her in front of the kids. After five weeks of trial, a day of reckoning. We, the jury, find the defendant, Frederick William Tokars, guilty of malice murder. Tokars was convicted of the most serious charge against him. Prosecutors wanted him put to death. I expect the defense will talk to you a lot about you can't do this to the children. That a sentence of death against this defendant somehow robs these children of a father.
the defendant forfeited that right as a parent when he ordered the death of these boys' mother. It was the defendant's mother who pleaded with the jury. Please don't kill my son. I beg you to spare my son's life. To lose my son, Fred, by the death penalty, I couldn't bear it. A death sentence in Georgia had to be unanimous. I mean, this evidence was there. The motive was there. The, the, the controlling behavior. We, the jury, have found beyond a reasonable doubt that one or more of the alleged statutory aggravating circumstances do exist, and we recommend a life sentence to be imposed. Relieved, Tokars turned to the gallery and sought the one person he could always count on, mouthing the word mom. Mom, something his sons could no longer do. And Ted Rollins joins us now. Uh, Ted, Fred Tokars passing away in prison. And I know you had an opportunity to speak with his uh, attorney, uh, another fellow uh, pirate, Seton Hall School of Law grad, uh, Jerry Froelich. Uh, what did Jerry have to say today? Uh, a lot. You know, he, he talked about a couple things about how Fred had helped out the feds with a couple murders. He also talked about the way uh, that Fred ended up dying. Take a listen. Fred did have some physical issues for years. I know that he was confined to a real a wheelchair, but in the end, do you think that he may have died of the coronavirus? I don't know. I know that what I was told and from the family that he, he was, he, he got a, a severe fever and high temperature on Monday before he died. And that um, he then, this is what they were told by a chaplain and that he was transferred to the hospital, I believe on Friday, and he died Friday night or Saturday morning. Uh, you know, he had a lot, as I have told you, he was in a wheelchair for 10 years. He had a multiple sclerosis. He had been beat up and kicked numerous times in the back for cooperating and had back problems and he couldn't urinate without a catheter. So he had a lot of problems. And then he, then he gets the news that his son has died and the government has refused to live up to their bargains. And um, his son, of course, died very recently. Um, he did not have a relationship with either of his boys. He, he tried to, according to his lawyer, uh, but the boys wanted nothing to do with him. Jerry seemed like um, a little angry with the government, not living up to their promises. What's, what's he talking about there? Fred Tokar is, while in prison, of course, he's a lawyer, right? So he's in prison. Everybody comes to him wanting legal help two separate occasions, he was able to basically solve some murders, six murders in all, two separate crimes. And, you know, he took lie detectors tests. He, he found this information out from his jail clients, told the feds about it. He testified against them. They got convictions. So the deal was, you do this, uh, you're going to get some consideration. Well, he had two letters from two prosecutors, one in Iowa, one in Arizona, but at the end, the local prosecutor who prosecuted this case said no. A judge said no. Sorry, buddy. Doesn't matter what you did. You're spending the rest of your life in prison. All right. I know you also asked him about, um, Jerry, about whether or not Fred Tokars ever confessed to the crime. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. What, what should people know about Fred Tokar that they don't know. They know him as this monster, uh, greedy husband who had his wife killed. What, I, I, I'm not know. here. I'm not here to tell you he was a great guy or anything. I'm just not. Uh, I'm just saying he did what the law asked for and what the judicial system asked for and how the judicial system, the justice system in this country works. They need bad people to convict other bad people. Did Fred ever admit guilt? No. Never. Did he ever show remorse to you or anybody else? I don't know what you mean by remorse. He asked me to try the cases. I tried the cases. Um, you know, he denied, denied it in court, and he denied it to me. It's, I don't make judgments. I accept jury's verdicts, and I move on. I wasn't angry at jurors. I wasn't angry at the prosecutors who tried the cases. It doesn't matter. In fact, I became good friends with them. You don't necessarily disagree with the jury's verdict, um, is that what I'm getting from you? That well, no, I, I can. Do you think I, that Fred? Do you think that Fred was wrongfully convicted? I accept jury's verdicts. 
I don't make those decisions. The jury found that he got a trial. The jury found him guilty. I accept that. I mean, 12 people said, yeah, you, you know, I accept that. I don't go out and attack jurors or anything like that. That's not my job. My job is to put up a defense and I accept it. Yeah, he accepted. Apparently, Fred never did, though. Never apologized, never admitted guilt, um, which, given the amount of evidence, is fascinating. Yeah, I mean, th this is one of those cases when uh, I first moved to the area, everyone's still talking about it, still talking about Fred Tokars. And I guess it's because who he was, you know, in the legal community and what a, what a horrific type of, of story it was. Um, and, and again, the, his wife was murdered in front of those children. So you, you, you kill the mother and you ruin the lives of the kids. Absolutely. Yeah. To that point, you know, he was one of these lawyers who was on TV all the time. So people in the Atlanta metro area knew Fred Tokars, call me if you're in trouble. Apparently he was in trouble. He was um, dealing, uh, doing some uh, fencing, uh, or some drug money laundering. Uh, his wife apparently found out about it, was going to divorce him, possibly turn him in. That was the motive that was floated. Um, but again, he says he didn't do it. I, I don't think, I think he was one of the only people who didn't believe he did it. Who, who didn't think he did it, it. yeah. yeah. I, I, exactly. And, you know, there's, there's many great uh, defense attorneys like Jerry Froelich out there, uh, but there's always a few that it's a fine line between criminal defense attorney and criminal, and this is, is Fred Tokars is one who crossed that line.